Hello everyone, welcome back to another theatre vlog. Today I'm in Birmingham. It's my second trip to Birmingham in the last week. In the last week, yeah. So anyway, I risked it and I got the train up here this morning without a ticket. And I managed to get a band A ticket, so one of the like the good seats that aren't premiums, at 25, just under 25 pounds. And I do have an A to G card to be honest, so that probably affected it, but um, yeah, I managed to get it much cheaper than it should have been. So that's good, very happy with that. And now I'm gonna go in, because it's just before two o'clock, show starts at 2.30, so I thought I'd just chill in one of their bars, and have a look around the theater, because I've not been to this theater before, so it's another new theater, and another trip to Birmingham. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, let's see what the theatre's like, and I'm very excited to see the show. I haven't even said about that, but I was going to try and see the last ship on Broadway a few years ago, and then it closed before I got there. So I didn't manage to see it there, and then when I heard it was touring, I was very excited. I wanted to try and see it up in Newcastle, but it's so expensive in terms of like the travel and everything. So Birmingham's a lot easier. It's a lot closer to London. It travels a lot cheaper. Feeling good. is now the interval of the last ship. We'll enjoy some piano music in the background because I'm just below the bar level. So you've got the like foyer down there and then bars up here. It's a really nice theatre actually. I've not seen really any photos of like the full auditorium but it's gorgeous and it's um, really nice for a show like this as well because it's all like blues and golds and very sort of not specifically like nautical theming colours but it's just very pretty. It's all very nice and I'm really enjoying the show as well. So if you know me, you know I like to go into shows blind. The only song I knew from this show was um, mainly the If You Ever See Me Talking To A Sailor song because Rachel Tucker was in the Broadway production of this show and obviously I'm quite the fan of Rachel Tucker so I'd heard her sing that. I think she did it at one of her concerts um, so that was the only song maybe one of the other ones but not well and yeah i'm really really enjoying it i struggled at the start of the show i think the microphones weren't uh when like the whole cast was singing it was quite hard to understand i think it's a mix of like the uh the accents and the microphones and the band it's like a combination of everything but it's not like too hard to follow the story there's one cast member who's um because he's a, uh, playing a drunk as well. His accent's quite hard to continually understand but it's not a bother to the storyline. I can still tell what's going on. The set and the projections are two things that are really blowing me away. The projections, oh my god. I don't think I've ever seen projections done this well in the theatre before. It's just incredible uh, to watch and so so good because sometimes I've seen shows and the projections have just been really bad and they've they've actually made the show worse rather than better. Whereas with this show, they're being done incredibly well. So I'm gonna have a little wander around the theater now, check out the merchandise because I didn't look at that on the way in. And yeah, go back to my seat bag too.
What do we go? For the mist upon the river. Tell me, what do we go? For the noise in St. Lord. What do we go? For the arse and the weather. Aye. We'll be working horizontal rain. And shiver in the cold. If you ever see me talking to a sailor, and I blindly stand there passing time of day, well, don't you hesitate to think someone's tampered with your drink. And he's shaking on your hand, peg in the time it takes to blink. Just call the funny barn to carry me away. When we are tired, stingers will run and hide. Welcome back to the chatty section of the vlog. As you saw, I revisited Birmingham. I've been up there a couple of times recently. And this time it was to see the last ship at the new Alexandra Theatre. I've never been to this theatre before, so it was really exciting to visit a new theatre, a new regional theatre, and to also see the last ship. I really wanted to see the last ship when it was on Broadway a few years ago because my bae Rachel Tucker was in the show, but unfortunately it closed before I got there. It had to close early, I think, which was really sad. When I found out that it was gonna be doing a UK tour, I was so excited to finally have the chance to see this show. I didn't know a huge amount about the show, but I just felt like there was something that I was gonna like about it, and I was really excited to see it. The only song that I'd really heard from it was If You Ever See Me Talking To A Sailor, because that was one of the songs that Rachel Tucker had to sing, so I am a Rachel Tucker fan girl, so that's the only one I knew initially. But I think that's really a good thing actually because if it weren't for Rachel Tucker's involvement I probably wouldn't have known as much about this show and I probably wouldn't have had the draw to see it and even though she's not in this production I still really wanted to see it so I just think that's a really good thing and something I'd never really thought about before that even her previous involvement encouraged me to go and see this show. It's just something interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Saying that though, there were a couple of people that I was really excited to see in this show and I'm gonna talk about that later on. I mentioned earlier on in the vlog about the ticket situation. So I'd been watching the tickets online for a little while. I was watching to see if they were gonna change some of the pricing in the theater. They eventually ended up closing off the upper circle, which is really sad because that does mean that a show isn't selling too well. Because of that, they effectively closed off the cheaper ticket prices. So instead I decided to risk it and get my train ticket, take the train up to Birmingham without a theatre ticket and just buy it when I got there. And it actually paid off because with my ATG card, which I bought at the start of this year because they had a New Year's sale on, I managed to get a ticket that should have been around £40 for like £24. It was a really good seat as well, it was in the middle of the dress circle, so that definitely worked in my favour. If you're wanting to see a regional production and you see that it's not selling so well, which is obviously sad for the show and the cast. As someone who sees a lot of theatre, I didn't want to spend like 50 odd pounds on a not so good seat, when in the end obviously I risked it and managed to get a really good seat at like 25 pounds so i'd recommend doing that just keep an eye on the tickets and decide whether to risk it or not also because i traveled obviously like from london it wasn't like i just popped in the car and went down to the theater it was like it was a journey <laughs> so i'm glad that i managed to get a really good seat and it was it was a fantastic seat and this theater is gorgeous from the outside it doesn't really look like a lot but going in Wow, it was beautiful. And I loved that it was like all blues and gold. So like a little bit nautical themed, which obviously fit with The Last Ship. It was just stunning. It absolutely wasn't what I was expecting. The Last Ship is a musical written by Sting. And I'm gonna read the description that's in the program because I want to do it justice. I don't want to badly describe this 
So from the programme, it is true to say that it has been a long journey bringing Sting's personal, passionate and political musical home to the northeast of England. Inspired by his 1991 album The Soul Cages and his own childhood experiences, The Last Ship is an epic account of a family, a community and a great act of defiance. The musical is a deeply personal project for the famous singer-songwriter who left his shipbuilding hometown of Wall's End when he was just 18 years old. In September 2011 it was confirmed that he was working on the musical and then it was in Chicago for an off-Broadway tryout in 2014 and after that it went to Broadway 2014 closing the in January 2015 and then in October 2017 so not that long ago really another workshop took place and it says it was in Gateshead which is just a few miles from where Sting grew up and where the shipyards that inspired the show are. So that's exciting. It's been a while, <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I didn't realize that three years since it closed on Broadway. So as you can tell from that, it's very personal to Sting and it's about the shipbuilding community in Newcastle. So it was really wonderful when it was announced that the UK tour would be starting up in Newcastle at the Northern Stage. And I really, really wanted to try and see it there, but unfortunately, by the time I got my act together, the only tickets left were quite pricey. And then the, the travel and the logistics of all of it, it would have just been too expensive. I can't say that I'm a massive Sting fan in terms of I've never really listened to his music. So I was quite surprised and like pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed the music that's in The Last Ship. I think it's always a bit risky when someone like that does create a musical. Sometimes it can be great and sometimes it can be not so great. Beyond that though, I loved what they were doing in terms of the staging, the sets and the projections especially. The whole visual aspect of the show completely blew me away and especially in the projections. The design has been done by 59 Productions and I believe that's the same production company that did the projections and such for um, An American in Paris. I enjoyed the projections in American in Paris but I wasn't like blown away by them whereas in this show I feel like they utilize them so beautifully and so powerfully as well no spoilers but in the last scene especially oh my goodness completely blown away so in terms of the visual aspect I feel like they really nailed it with this show there was just so many things that they were cleverly doing and they all worked in harmony and they were seamless I loved watching them. In terms of the story, I found it to be quite similar to the likes of Billy Elliot. It really reminded me of that, especially being in a very similar community. Different subjects, obviously, but similar community aspect. I really enjoyed that, you know. It wasn't too heavy for the majority of the time, but it definitely got you in the feelings. This sounds weird, but I really enjoyed the story. Not that it was a happy story a lot of the time, but I thought the way that they told it was really beautifully done and it really got you feeling a lot of different things, even if you couldn't necessarily relate to what was exactly happening in the show in terms of uh, the shipbuilding community, you could definitely relate to some of the personal tragedies that were happening in the show. And that's not to say as well that it was a depressing show. I didn't leave feeling depressed. I just left feeling a bit sort of melancholy. As I mentioned earlier on, there were a couple of people in this cast who I was really excited to see. And that was Richard Fleishman, who played one of the main characters as Gideon Fletcher, and Frances McNamee, who played another one of the main female characters as Meg Dawson. I've seen Richard Fleishman in a few different shows, and I think the way he acts and sings is just sublime. So I I'm always happy to see him cast in something. And Frances McNamee, I recently saw her in Big Fish. I don't know if I've seen her in anything else. I'm just checking out her bio. It doesn't look like I've seen her in anything else. I really liked her in Big Fish. So when I saw that she was cast in this show, I was excited to see her again. Their characters in the show are love interest let's say I don't want to spoil anything because I think for this show you really want to go in hopefully not knowing anything because then the little the twists and things like that will be just more of an impact to you but yes their characters are close let's say in the show thought they were wonderful together and they're just 
amazing performers as well. I was really happy to see both of them in a show again anyway, but to see how they acted together, it was just really wonderful because their characters have some moments of not getting on so much and that it, they just, they performed it perfectly. It was, it was so nice to see them. I also thought Charlie Hardwick, who played the role of Peggy White, gave an astounding performance. Bless her, she, she goes through some things and your heart really bleeds for her. So the way she did it, the way she pulled all the heartstrings, I, I really, um, literally applauded her for that. <laughs> Overall, I really, really loved seeing this show. It was such a joy to finally see it and to see how good it is. I'm still a little bitter that I couldn't see the Broadway production, especially to compare between the two, because I know a lot of work's been done to get it to where it is now. If I'm being completely honest, I think there's more that could be done in terms of tightening up how the show is. There were some songs that I felt could have been cut a little bit shorter. You know, I think 10 minutes overall could have been cut from the show and it would have tightened everything up a little bit. The show is not long in itself. You know, when you feel like some moments are dragging on a little bit, that's when you know that things could be changed a little bit. Also, I don't know if it was just my performance, but at the very start of the show, there were some just like little issues with the sound in terms of the microphones. Obviously when it's an introductory song and you're finding out what's going on, you wanna be able to hear everything that's going on. But I'd like to think that's just a one-off because after that, you know, you can pick up what's going on. It's not too complicated to figure out what's happening. So yeah, I had a really fantastic time seeing The Last Ship at the New Alexandra Theatre and I really wanna try and see it again. I don't know if it's coming anywhere close to London again. I'll have to check out their list of tour dates. Also, I wanna show you the magnet I picked up because if you follow my channel, you know that I love magnets from the various theater halls that I've done. And this magnet is a thing of beauty. So the artwork for this show, I think is absolutely stunning. It's inspired by a cathedral in Newcastle. I'm not sure which one, forgive my ignorance. So this magnet is obviously inspired by that as well. And can we just look at how stunning that is? So not only is it gorgeous to look at like that, but it's like a good thickness as well. So you can't really tell on camera, but it it's just such a high quality magnet and I'm really happy with it. I can't remember how much it was. I just saw it and I was like, I need that, thank you. <laughs> so it's the same sort of design that's on the program as well. So that's the program as well. And I just think the design of it is really, really lovely. I had such a good time seeing this show. And yes, it's not the happiest of shows to see, but I think it's a really wonderful show and a wonderful story to be told. And I definitely recommend that you go and see it. I would love to know if you've been to see this show already, whether you were able to see it on Broadway or if you saw it at the Northern Stage. I would love to know if you've seen the show and what you thought of it, do let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of me in the future. I make a lot of theatre videos, so if you enjoy that, you might wanna stick around. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you very soon. Bye.